Okay, good morning everybody. Even though we had daylight savings time, Baruch Hashem, we had a minion. Sooner or later, I wanted to dedicate today's uh, halacha to a, a very special congregant we had today. It's his yurt site. Uh, Mashallah, Abraham ben Abraham Kohanim, and uh, all of his children and family is here. May they for 120 years remember this very humble and sweet and a true Kohen. He was a true Kohen. So God bless his soul. We're going to de dedicate this halacha for him. Okay, last few classes we had, we are talking about the great benefits of praying with Sibur. Like today, I had to make as usual many calls that we got the minion, but and uh, Berlin Eder, this will be the last series. This is the third installment of talking about how important it is to pray as a congregation. So I want to quote from you. One of the greatest Sephardic rabbis that wrote one of the most important books of ethics is the Peli Yoetz. And he explains in his book, why is it so important? You know, everybody could pray at their own kotel. You know the joke. You could pray at your own uh, bedroom or a dining room wall. But... It's worth it to make the extra effort to bend over backwards to come and make it a priority to come to the synagogue and pray with the Sibur. Why? Look what he says, the Pelioets. He says, <laughs> He says, unfortunately, he's writing this 200 years ago. He says, it's so difficult to have the proper kavana intention. Now, if he was dealing with the day, the, the day of the iPad and people can't even watch, watch a uh, TV show for more than five minutes, they, they flip the channel today with the attention span, I'm sure, is much, 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 much. He's writing 200 years ago that we're not able to have Kavana. And they were in Turkey and there was no internet and no TV and no distractions. Here, you know, I think... If the Sanhedrin would exist, the first thing they would do in every synagogue, if the grand Sanhedrin would exist, is they would put a shoter, a Jewish policeman, to confiscate everybody's cell phone. Because it's such a... So he says 200 years ago, even great rabbis that learned the whole day, it's hard to say they have a proper kavana, Right? Because we get spaced out, spaced out, spaced out. So he says, he says we're like drunk people, but not from wine. We're drunk from the problems that we have. And, you know, you want to focus, connect with the Almighty, but a million and one different thoughts come into your mind. So what hope do we have? Only to pray with Sibur. You know why? Guys, I have some good news and bad news for you. If you decide to be lazy and stay home and pray by yourself, you've got to have a lot of guts. Because there's a very big difference between praying with the asara, 10 people, or praying as an individual. When you pray as an individual, of course God hears our prayers. But if your prayers are not sincere, if you pray in your home by yourself, but you're, you're saying the words, but you're not thinking about them because you're thinking about the Lakers or the Clippers or God knows what, or your stocks that have crashed, I have bad news for you. God accepts every prayer, even if you're not with 10. But the prayer has to be a true prayer. It has to be sincere. So the problem is, if you're spaced out, the tefillah is not going to go up so much because you may be saying the words, but the, you know the famous saying, a prayer without intention, kavana, is like a body without a soul. The soul of our prayer is not the words. The soul of our prayer is what? The kavana, the intention, the meditation that we have to connect to the Almighty. So therefore, you've got to have a lot of guts not to come to Minyan and pray by yourself. Because if you're, so that's what the Pelio Etz, one of the grand rabbis says. He says, there's an amazing, amazing benefit of praying with a Minyan. And you know what that is? Since we're ten, all ten of us together, God takes the, all ten of our kavanas. And if it's a bigger Minyan, it's even better. And at least we hope one of these 10 people has kavana. And since, you know, they say the unit is greater than the total. 10 is much greater than, it's a whole different manifestation. It's a whole different uh, spiritual level. So we know our Chachamim say, look in the Talmud, page Berachot, page Chet, 
Amar Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. The great Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai that wrote the Holy Zohar writes in the Talmud. Bavli, page 8. Chet Amud Aleph. Amar Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. We have a tradition from the time of Moses. And this is why we have to bend over backwards to go to a minion and always pray. The, the prayer of a minion, gentlemen, never comes back empty. You understand? God says, I love it when Jews, you know, when there's 10 Jews, there's 20 opinions. So if we're able to put our differences aside and come and forgive each other and... Um, how do we say my Farsi, unfortunately, is getting better than my English? It says, tahamul, to be able to tolerate. Pay, tolerate each other, right? You know the joke that there was an island, there was two Jews on it, there was two shuls. So they said, there was, so they said you're only one Jew on the island. Why do, you, why, do you have, why do you have two shuls? He says, there's one shul I pray in and one kenisa I don't pray in. So it's, it's, it's a great miracle when Jews are able to forgive and tolerate and come each other. So we have a very, very, very important tradition. The tefillah of a sibur, if 10 people come together, it for sure is going to come back with a good answer. But you've got to have guts if you're praying at your own kotel, at your own wall, Avram Chaim. And just two more ideas about praying with tefillah. It's brought down in the holy books that if you want to make money, that you know, living in Los Angeles, we have so many mortgages and expenses. There's a lot of fringe benefits for praying with the Sibur. It's brought down in the holy books, the Midrashim and our holy books, that there's two added benefits of praying with the Minyan. One of them is having a lot of blessing in your life, making a good uh, living so you can... Um, Raise your children and make your wife happy in an honorable and prestigious way. And also, it's a segula, by the way. You know, the Gemara says, Rabbi Yohanan, one of the great rabbis of the Talmud, he went to Babylonia. He saw that there's very, very old people there. People in their 90s and hundreds. So we call them centurions, right? They're people that are... So he was dumbfounded. Because every day in Shema Israel we read what? Where do we get a long life? It says in Shema. In Israel. So how in Babylonia people are centurions, they're living to 90, 100, so long. So he said, you know why? Then he thought about it, he contemplated, and he, you know what he said? He said the reason why they're living so long is because they come to Bet Knesset. They come very early. Like if the Kenisa starts 6 a.m., they come 5 a.m. So in this m tremendous merit of praying with the, in the synagogue with the Asara, they get a long life. So the Gra and the Maharal, they say a beautiful idea. He says, you know why? Because, gentlemen, when you come to this holy place, it's like you're coming to Israel. Every Kenisa is like an embassy. Do you know the international law? When you go inside an embassy of a country, it's like you're in the ground, right? You have all the virtues of living right now, even though like you, if you go to the U.S. Embassy of Israel in L.A. right here, if you go inside, it's like you're what? You're on a sovereign nation. So the same thing, like me and doctor were discussing, this, the, the Kenisa is like a mini temple. So it, when, you, when you come to the temple, it's like you're coming to the embassy, so to speak, of Israel. That's why amazing benefit of praying every day and constantly with the minyan is having a long and happy life. And last but not least, I want to say Baruch Hashem, we Sephardic Jews, what we're doing right now. We have a minhag that we say two halachot, you know, at end of Ketoret, every day we say, Tana debe Eliyahu, kol hashone alachot bechol yom, muftach lo shalom baba. From the yeshiva of the great, great prophet Eliyohan Navi, they taught us a very, very important pearl of wisdom. And you know what that is? Whoever reviews and studies two Jewish laws, it's for sure guaranteed he's going to where? Upstairs, right? We all want to go upstairs. We want to go, don't want to go Tijuana. 
We don't want to go. So, one of the greatest things in life is mitzvah goreret mitzvah. Like we say in Farsi, yechubi hezar to chubi miyare. When you do, when you come to Bet Knesset, not only are you going to get the benefit of praying, but at the end, there's this beautiful custom that we have that we teach to what? Halachot. And these two halachot is not something that is wish-washy and something that we shouldn't appreciate. It's such a, this thing that we do right now for five, ten minutes, if you do it every day, Eliyahu Hanavi, that Eliyahu that is the, the angel of the Brit Milah, he says that it's going to, it, he's going to come and he's going to make us into a guarantee that we get to Olam Abba. So may Hashem always give us the health and the opportunity to come to the shul. Amen. Amen. Amen.